G'day guys. Uh, Nathan Stewart's joined me today and for a while we've been talking about some interest that's been shown on social media about binoculars and what's good choices and what's not and value for money. So we've got a fair variety of binos here today. So all of which are owned by Nathan, myself or my brother. Um, other than one pair which are a demo set and they're from Outdoor Sports Australia and they're Maven. So um, welcome Nathan. Thanks for having me Dave. Keen to see what these stack up like. There's a couple of pairs here that I haven't looked through before so it should be a uh, should be a good little showdown of binos, see what's good value. It's certainly a uh, interesting space. It's a huge range obviously what you can spend on binoculars. You can spend a lot of money. It can you can do so it's, um, bit of a rabbit hole so yeah it is a big rabbit hole um, heaps of there's a lot of range it's a very competitive space out there um, but optics is something that we don't know when it's real in like technically wise so we're just going to do a practical assessment of what we see now that's to Nathan's and I my eyes you know where up where I did the initial review or thoughts on the Maven B5s, um, it's later in the afternoon. It's now 5:30. Um, you know we're first of October, so in the Southern Hemisphere, so the days are starting to get a bit longer. Um, we've got good range of area down in front of us, which we'll show shortly. Um, and we're looking at some open area, some bracken, some tree line and fringe, which is what, how far out was that fringe, no? Oh, that fringe over there is right on a K, uh, so a kilometre. Um, we've got a big clearing down here with a heap of bracken on it and a couple of small ponies. Uh, that's out to about 400 to 450 metres. We've got some buildings right out they're about two and a half kilometres away, so that'll be interesting to see what they do when the light fades, because you can obviously see the, the sign writing on those, they're commercial buildings. Um, and we've got a building site down here, I think that was at about 650 as well. So yeah, so good it's a range. Good, good range of distances, and we're, up, we're in an elevated position, which is quite often what we're doing when we're out hunting. So. Look, um, as we said, this is not a review as such, it's just a compare-o, um, and we'll wrap this up back in the office and talk about value for money and what we saw with each binos. Um, um, it's, but before we go into it, I think it's important that what people take out of this is that we're not pushing any one brand or any one size or range or price point of binocular. Everyone's got their budgets um, and we're just trying to give a bit of an insight into what you get in the different price points and what's out there. But you really need to consider what you want to do with your binos and how you use them. Like the B5s here, they're a dedicated tripod mounted binocular you know they're 18 power you're going to struggle to hold them still um, they weigh 1.2 kilos um, whereas Nathan's B3 8 by 30s these are a great bino to carry around your neck and glass in thick country and I think that's one thing a lot of blokes miss isn't it Nathan like when I'm stalking in thick country I'm glassing under trees that are 20 metres away, you know, because I can't see what's in under that tree. And I'm glassing out to two, three hundred, maybe further. And then if I'm in a scenario like this, like I was with Robbo in the Vic Island country with Ben, we're sitting on a bluff and we're glassing out to two Ks, two and a half Ks. So you need to find out what your work works for you. So I guess what we'll do is we'll talk about what we've got. So, as I said, we've got the Maven B5 uh, 18 by 56. Now, great bino, really impressed with them thus far. They're Japanese optics made or assembled in the US 
um, and they're a magnesium frame binocular. Um, and I'll just give what is possibly a few important stats in which one of them's weight and the other one's field of view. So the field of view of those mavens is 194 feet at a thousand yards. Now I haven't had time to convert that, but that's probably like 55 meters. So close. at a thousand yards, yeah. Yeah, I'm crossing up me imperials and metrics, but I'm sure you guys get the- um, That's how a lot of the specs read, it's all, it's all comparable. That's right, so yeah, they're all in imperials, so we'll keep talking. Uh, the other binocular I've got here is my other binos that I've had for three years. These are a set of Suaro SLCs. They're 10 by 42s. Now, they're 330 feet at 1,000 yards field of view. They're magnesium construction and they weigh 765 grams. Um, I've also got my brother's Vortex Viper HD. 8 by 32s um, they they are 700 grams alloy construction now I'm think they're made in the Philippines I couldn't quite verify that obviously the Swarovskis they're made in Austria um, and then we've got the demo set of mavens these are a polymer construction they've got components from both Japan and China, and they're assembled in the Phil Philippines. Um, and they weigh in at 800 grams. There are, did I say what they were, no? 10 by 50s. Yeah, 10 by 50s. Uh, what have you got here, Nath? So I've got little Maven B3s. They're quite a compact pair. Uh, I'll read off Dave's specs because he's got it in front of me. Uh, so they're 460 grams, field of view is 430 feet at a thousand yards and they are a polymer construction, so quite a handy little pair of binos. And we've got Maven B2s in 9x45, uh, they're 943 grams, field of view is 314 feet at a thousand yards. Uh, and they're a magnesium housing, same as the B5s and the Swaros. Yeah, so and I think I left out the Vortex Viper field of view is 409 feet. Yep. So we've got quite a range of field of view. The Suaros currently sell for about 2200 um, and down to the Vortex, uh, the C3s in the Mavens, they're 700. Um, so we're sort of, we've not looked really at the um, lower end but I did want to get a set of the C3 Mavens in the smaller ones, but there were none available to do a demo on. So the 10 by 50s will be interesting to see because you know they're probably a very usable optic, um, a bigger, bigger binocular physically, but you know we'll see what we see. So we'll we'll just we might kick off just yeah, have a look like through the these down, down, down so. and we'll just talk about it and put this together as we see fit and what do you want to start with well i'm thinking do we start with the little ones we'll start with the um so the eight start with the eights because they're comparable yep we're, yeah that's and right. then and then we can step up to the bigger one so i've set those for my eyes nath but i didn't yours but i didn't move them that far So I, down on that chain link fence, which mm -hmm. is, I'll just range that so we know. That was about, to the top of that it'd be about 460. Can you make out the crow on the pad at the top? I'll just have a look, mate. There's a crow p poking along the top of that, of that clearing. You're just walking along so the that, top. So near the chain link? Yep. So it's about 530 yards to the chain link. To the chain link, yeah. Okay. It's actually not bad to look in behind that chain link because you're looking is, into the yeah. timber. 
So where was the crow? Uh, I can just see his head. He's, there's a piece of tin or something sticking up and a bit of a pile of dirt. He's Behind tuck, the fence? Yeah, he's just... No, on this side of the fence, he's, he's in the grass at the moment. Oh, yeah, I think I see. Yeah. Just swap, right. Swap them over if you want. Yeah. I'll see what the, the gap's like. Uh, these are definitely a bit sharper. Mm, I reckon. I reckon you're right. Even on the chain link. Yes. Like the chain link, I couldn't quite make out the individual chain link mm. wire. Yeah. But I can with yeah. these and I can see that crow clear as. These are just as bright though, I think, back yes, into that timber. Yeah, they I don't are think there's a brightness difference. Different. Now, I will say, Nath, I've adjusted Nathan's binoculars to suit mine, and on the diopter adjustment, I went one click difference. So, so pretty close. Our eyes are very similar. Yep. See those birds hassling the crow now? Yeah, yep. There's definitely more definition on these on that chain link. Yeah, I'm just... Go out a bit further. So if you go out to that clearing over the top of this tree here. Yep. There's a white house at the back of it. That that was out around the kilometre mark. So can you see the ute parked in the driveway? To the left. Yep. The white ute. Yep. Yep. Alloy tray. Well, you might have a different angle on that. Which... Oh no, you're out there, yeah, I can see that one. Yep. Yes, yep. So where were you looking? Oh, next clearing back. Back. That's all right, we yep. can go on that one out there. So you can see the whiz, the recycle whiz bin. Yeah, the white dot on it. Yeah, just a look Definition in the power lines is always a good one. Must say, there's a little bit of a haze, smoke haze and around today, so that is making a difference but that's real world and this is what it's about and Look. this is always the thing that I've found you can't tell what binos and scopes are like in a shop so that's why we've come out to a real world scenario I so think they're both good they're both yeah. yeah I think they might the mavens might be slightly the slight, Slightly yeah. sharper. I cannot pick up a difference in brightness. No, nah, they both seem just as bright. Um, but yeah, the mavens are, you know, a couple of, maybe 5% sharper on top of the vortexes. Field, you notice the field of view a little bit between them? Well, I haven't really checked that out, no. Give us a look. It's marginal. Now. Yeah, slightly. If I put one lens, can I just go back to those? Yep. If I go from lens edge across to that house. It's a field of view. So that's a fair bit wider on these. Yes, it is. Out yep. at that range. I can, see, I can see another whole house to the side. Yeah. At a thousand, it's about another 20 feet wider. Like yeah. both really good binos. Oh yeah, edge sharpness is good. Good, yeah. Focus is good on both of them. It's yeah. always a young. Really, no slop in either of them. And that's no. the one thing I've noticed with my mavens and those mavens. No focus in it. No, one there's no play, play in the focus. In, yeah, that's yeah. right. Sorry, no play in the focus knob. It's very direct. Um, what about closer in on these goats? They're about 400 straight down under us. They're probably not a bad... See Under down the street, yeah. So we've got some goats down here, yeah. See, I'd see, I'd see complete Easy. definition of those if you're trying to assess a, a trophy quality on an animal that size. Yeah, and that's about what. They're, they're, the mavens are sharper yes. at that range. Yeah, they are. I can see the difference. Yes, on that, I can see the horns on that, of the brown one. Yeah, lying that brown on. one laying down. And I couldn't in that. Yeah, you swap back. You can just see. You can just see those little horns. It's only a nanny goat. They're not big horns. 
Yeah, just that, yeah. But you can see that yep. the, the colour, mavens the have definitely got, got just one other. The mavens have definitely got a bit more sharpness. Very similar in their depth of field too. So we'll jump to the 10 powers. So we've got those. You class it, I mean, these are all 9 40, by 45s. Yeah. They're pretty. 10 by 42s and 10 by 50s. So we'll yeah. put all of them up together and see what how we go. So Starting on those gates again, because yep. that's just what we're looking at. So immediately, it's magnification yeah, of the 10s is yep. much better. Yep. Just look at those other. Oh yeah, look at those. No, you, you jump on those. The focus is a lot slower on the SLCs, which is kind of nice. And we've got two of the, these young goats having a bit of a Donny Brook for trying to. Give me the 10 by 50s. Go back to yours. Now, you can see a significant drop yeah. in the seas from the Suaros, which yes. I'm not to disparage the C1 Mavens, but that is not something that I wouldn't expect. Um, and it doesn't seem, the colour rendition is not as bright, that, well they're not as bright and the colours don't seem to pop out as much. Which will be interesting now these are the Maven V2s. I still rate those V2s. And you know what, I'm gonna say, these Maven B2s, and people are probably going to howl me down, but I've had these for three years and used them. New Zealand, you know, tar hunting, I've used them. Upper Hunter Valley, pigs, deer, I've used them. After Sandbar, and I'm going to say, those Maven B2s are brighter. They're good. They're at least brighter. So for context of myself owning those B2s. I had a pair of Leica Ultravid 10x42s before that and I actually had them both for a time uh, and I kept those so that um, I, I like those um, obviously because I kept them. It's actually good to see your comments going between the two. I think also the colours a bit more intense in the yeah. in the mavens, and the con the colour and contrast is better in the mavens. Yeah, it is a little bit very slightly, but yeah, I'm I'm super impressed with those mavens. Now these C class C ones. So if you go from the goats out to that chain link, I could still see chain link definition. Yep. I can see in chain those. link with these. The crow's still out there, there walking around. Yeah. So the sun has actually gone now, down yeah, now. We've lost now, that now. We were going to try and get some footage of looking into the sun, but we might have to pick that up another yeah. day because, and I think the way this might end up is might be two videos at this point. Now the thing that Nath just commented on is the focus on the Suaros is coarser, so more turn to change yep. the depth of field, which is good. That is not very, like it's super sharp, no slack, but... A you do seem to go very, a little bit too far, A bit back. more critical, it, yeah. It, it does seem to snap into focus quite well though. But I would say these Suaros don't seem to be, they, they, I don't know whether it's a little bit of slop in it. Uh, I can't quite tell it. I'm not sure on it.
even these C class, the C1s and the Mavens are a beautiful focus adjustment. It could just be an age thing on the Suarez. The yeah, focus isn't be. as smooth, but I mean, you've had yeah. these in use though. They'd have a bit of dust and stuff inside. Now, having said what we said about both these b binos, like Suarez is considered probably the pinnacle. Now, I'm blown away at how good these are, but I'm not surprised given my experiences with the B5s. These C1s are still very usable. Like, you know, I'm just watching two people walk up yeah. behind this chain link, um, and I can clearly follow them. I could see the crow bouncing around down there at, you know, 500 odd metres. I can still see into the bush behind there. Um, I could definitely see an animal moving if through the If it came timber. through that gap in that, yep. you know, completely shadowed space. And it, is, it is getting pretty dark. Dark, yeah. And I could see, like, if you're hunting State Forest New South Wales, it's sun up to sun down. So I'm going to say, I can't actually see the sun, but I'm going to call it sun down. You, we're, we're after shooting light now. It's 6 p.m., I think, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I can still see 50 metres behind that fence into the bush. Here's the gold on those C series again. I'll just add, this sort of stuff's really fun to do because you never get to line up like this in a shot. No, that's like, right. And not at last light. Light, and yeah. Longer ranges, you know, you might get to look at a buffalo head on the wall 50 yep. metres away or and this is something we want to do with the, some scopes too and yep. we'll hope to get Nate involved and we might have seven or eight scopes on mounted up on rifles and do this now I'm I'm really impressed with how bright those are they're bright their In, edge to edge sharpness is quite good yep. I mean you've got to remember they're they're probably on the budget end of what we've got in got, the line up today yeah, considering the, the size of them Now I'm going to say the B5s, they are definitely a fraction brighter. They're probably... B2s. B, yeah, the B2, sorry. They're definitely brighter. Like noticeably brighter, like not, you know, I'm talking sort of 5, 7, 5% 5 maybe. Swap them back. That's in that timber. Yep. That, and that's in yeah, comparison... Yeah, they are a bit. And that's in comparison to the Suaros. Yeah. They're different prism types though. Yes. You'd be very ha happy going back between the two. Yeah. And I've just picked up the B3 Mavens, the 8x30s, and you can see the difference now as the light's fallen off with the smaller objectives. Um, I can still see into the timber, but it's not as bright as any of the... Swap back. They're quite good. The, the others. The Vortex aren't, aren't bad, in that. They're probably comparable. Yeah. So, as we said before, these are probably slightly brighter than the Maven B3s, but they're sharper. They're sharper, yeah. yeah. I mean, there goes those people, people walking again. again. Yeah. And I can see whatever old mate's got in his hand. It's like a drink bottle. Yeah, I can only... Just, I can see he's holding something, yeah. but not make out. So what. you have a look through those, and you can see a bit more definition in what's in his hand. Yes. I mean, I've probably got better eyesight than Dave. I'm a bit younger. Yeah. And I don't have a um, a padded cushion, so I don't get bindies in my bottom. Dave's got that, so. And Dave sat in front of a a panel at work for yep. the last. 30 days, literally. So we wouldn't allude that I think Dave's soft or anything like that. That'd be poor form. Oh, he's just, he is soft <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> All right, so I think what we'll do now is... I'm keen to have a look through those. Give Nate a look at the big ones and see what his thoughts are. On so because... context again, I've had a pair of Soiree 15 by 56 uh, SLCs, I've sold them about six months ago, but I have owned a similar pair of, call them tripod binoculars. Um, so I'm keen to see what these are like. Now, 
and for to put a bit more context in it is that these the 15 by 56 are nearly 800 to a thousand dollars more than these Maven B5s. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? Yes. They are sharp right to the edge. If I pan, so those goats, call it 400. If I pan down, it's it is sharp. If I pan that down, it is sharp to about the outer half a mil, mil around, on the edge. Yeah. They are in, incredible binoculars. Looking into that timber out there. Now I didn't test them at this light level, which will be really interesting. Little, they become a little bit fussy on focus in the low light, but my Suarez were probably similar. Heaps more detail. I mean, you can see that, yeah, the, the chain link fence is different. Yes. I mean, they're, what are we looking at, 18s compared to, to 8 to 10? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it would nearly, or double to nearly double. Yeah. But if you can get those steady on that tripod, So one of the benefits to these tripod mounted binos is you don't get the eye fatigue that you do with a spotting scope because you've got both eyes open obviously. Um, but what you can also do, and I can do it on these, is you can you can look around within the image. It's not like you have to move the head around all the time. I can lock that onto that clearing out there and actually look around, around within it. Yep. And I think that helps with it your does, eye fatigue because yeah. you're looking within. And you're, you're not moving, moving your them. eyes and your eyes are working. Yep, yep. you jump behind them. It's a cracker afternoon up here now, it? Isn't is. It? So have you got your range finder there? Did you have mine? No, I got oh. mine out. What do you want me to hit? See the Hyundai down here? In the driveway? Um, let me walk you in. See the house that's being built? Over here, grey wall, grey and red wall. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Go across the road yep. above the tree. There's the, a car the coming down. The dark one, the dark car. Yeah, it's, is that a Hyundai? Is it? Yeah, I think it. Yeah, it is a Hyundai. Eight hundred and eighty-six. Now I can almost read the number plate. Not quite. That's if you're seriously into the trophy hunting and you're going to do goats or something like that. They're a great or trophy sheep rhino. somewhere around, yep. or tar, chamois. The, yep. These would pay for themselves on a hunt in terms that, of being. That's why I got the 15 by 56 yep. Suarez originally, because I did two hunts, the Queensland chasing red stags, and you do, you want that assessment before you waste the time trying to get in close. So here's some perspective. Now, those where the sun has been down for 15 minutes, and I'm looking at two and a half thousand metres at a lit shop sign. And I would reckon the letters that I'm about to read out to you are maybe 200 mil high. And I can tell you it says, modern country, traditional furniture. Which sign's that on? So I'm on your Suarez That's the, the white moment. one. Out the front of KFC or Office Works? It's um, left of Office Works. Is that under furniture? Yeah, the I little. Can, I, yeah. <laughs> he can't even nah, see. I can see it. I can Have see a look the through sign those. above it. I was still got light. Nah, I, no, no way I could read those. Let's give us a look through the, the B2s. Very similar. Yeah. You have a look through those. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? It is, yeah. Like, I can see the difference between the 9 and the 10 power on that sign at 2,500 metres. Yeah, look at that. But that, those 18s are just next level. So let's say 
modern contemporary traditional since 1986 I think it yeah. says. that's crazy so I'll just leave this up and I'll cut to this footage um, I'll just try and ga gather the light it's um it's so pretty is, dark now well, it's not dark it's just this would be prime hunting time the yeah. animals will be coming out off that fringe country now sun's down so this is a little bit of zoom on what we're looking at which is down there at that fence line down there and then we come across here we've got the goats down under that tree and then those signs I'll zoom out so you can see those signs are out there and I'll try and zoom in I'm holding this because I haven't got a long enough tripod way out there. So the video I'm just lining all of them up. Just at those at those goats under that tree, tree. in the shadow. So I've just got this camera on manual focus, so that's why I'm trying to move in. I'm not trying to cut the spot. Whatever, mate. Cuddle Nath, even though he'd probably keep me warm if we need but But the video the, this footage you're looking at now is probably doing the light level justice. Um, yeah, you know, we're getting right down in light levels. Like we're gonna have to we've probably got another 10 minutes and then we're going to have to pack up. 